Hello everybody, welcome to One Drink, the podcast where we talk about one topic for one drink. I'm Oliver. I'm Matthew. And today on our history show, we're featuring November 22nd to November 28th, as well, of course, as our two Medal of Honor stories for the week. Yup. And I got a history one in here that just threw me for a loop. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. A little restaurant. We've been through some loops. I know. This one, I was just like, this... Maybe you'll know. All right. Know. All right. We'll see. All right, so we're going to go to November 23rd, 1897. Portable pencil sharper, sharpener patented by American inventor John Lee Love. See, you know, you know what gets me is it took him that long to figure that out. <laughs> you know? Like, that, like, that's the kind of shit that pisses me off. <laughs> like, you know... Like instead of using mid, like mid eighteen hundreds, you know what I mean? Like mid to late eighteen hundreds. Like that's when like a lot of shit was like getting invented. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like shit that we still use today, like all the time. I oh, mean, yeah. I, maybe, maybe not so much because nobody writes a pencil anymore. But I know. But like you know that shit sold probably billions in you know the last hundred years. Oh yeah, I mean you you, you don't but, just buy one. Of them. But it's like it's shit like that. You can't invent shit like that no more. You know what I mean? Like if I if I was born back then, I'd have been an inventor for sure. Oh yeah. Especially because yeah. I'm lazy. So anything that I can invent that would make that would save me time right, right. and effort, that would have been like, man, I don't want to get up to go make that pencil sharpener. Yep. I'm gonna make a small one. Oh, let me put this tiny little razor in a little piece of plastic. And <laughs> done. So, done. All you gotta do is make sure you get the hole the right size. That's it. You can make it out of wood. Standard. Stick a razor blade in it, dude, and you're done. And it fucking he probably did that while he was sitting on his goddamn couch. Oh yeah. Staring at a pencil sharpener that he didn't want to get up to go get. Yep. And he was like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, I got this. I got this. And he made it. So I remember when I was in elementary school, you know, in the beginning of the the class, everyone would get up. And go to the pencil sharpener, and that's where everyone... Yeah, you may have used it to stand in line. And then there was always one asshole that brought all of their pencils. Oh, yeah. And just would stand there with, like, 30 pencils, and you're like... <laughs> and then you get to it, and it's fucking full. So you gotta take the Yeah, thing. you gotta <laughs> empty it, and then it, like, they, it like explodes, <laughs> and it's all over the place. And then you gotta clean it, because you're like, I only got one pencil. Yeah. And this guy's walking back with a whole box of colored pencils. Yeah. You know? Oh, man. And 30 number twos. It's like, come on, come on man. <laughs> Fuck. That's so annoying. <laughs> this little shit from childhood that you don't like think about very often. Yeah. But that shit's funny. Pencil sharpener was Pencil sharpener, man. Where it was at. Oh. Alright, uh November twenty second, seventeen eighteen. Mm. Blackbeard the Pirate. Oh who we talked about on our pirate show. We did. Uh, was killed off the coast of North Carolina after a long and perilous career. She Lieutenant did. Governor Alexander Spotswood of Virginia. Uh, had sent two sloops uh, to put an end to him. The sailors encountered Blackbeard, and Lieutenant Robert M- uh, Maynard killed him in a fight that followed. Yep. And Blackbeard was one of the bad he was, asses. He was the gangster. Like, amongst a group of gangsters, he yeah. was like... He might have been like the original OG. You know what I mean? I'm telling the you. The original pirate OG. Because when we did that show, we talked about several different pirates, types... Yeah, popular, but Blackbeard. I mean, he was also, you know, a lunatic because he had syphilis. He was crazy. Yeah, and that's why you know, I mean, he was a pimp. Yeah, he was a gangster, <laughs> for sure. If you're floating around the sea and you see this motherfucker, coming, right? Just turn your boat the other way, or just dump everything over and just give it to him. Because he's gonna rob you and right. take everything just and your put boat. The sa- put the sails down. Everybody stand on the bow and just let him just. Or Get you, all the shit. Stack or, it up nice. <laughs> you know what I mean? They'll be in and out 20 minutes. Or you just almost think about it. You're like, should we just blow a hole in this bitch and let it sink? Right. Because he's going to take it. Oh, man. Right. And if the boat was nice enough, he would have taken the boat, too. Oh, yeah. Bitch. Blackbeard was the main. Yep. All right. So November 24th, 1954, Air Force One. First U.S. presidential airplane was christened. Oh. 54, huh? 54. Further back than I thought. Yeah. That's cool. You know, they have two now. There's two. Do they? Two Air Force I thought they did, yeah. yeah. And they always fly at the same time. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, so you can't tell. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, they do the whole dog and pony show wow. for both planes so that you never actually know which one, you know, the president is on. I mean, it's on. pretty smart. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's the, accompanied by a pair of fighter jets, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everywhere. Dude, that's fine. So, um... Can you imagine just sitting in your, you know, you're sitting in the plane, you know, <laughs> right. whatever, and you just look out and there's just a fighter jet, like, stalking you? I'd be like, like, let somebody come up here. Yeah, yeah. Let somebody come up here. And you know they ain't about to put no rookie pilot no. on that Hell shit. No. You know what I mean? It's probably some salty old retired pilot or something yeah. like that that was, you know, got, you know, 100 kills or something. Like, br- like bring it. You know, yeah. like Viper from Top Gun, dude. You know what I mean? Like, that guy is the one that follows the president around. So, he's like, so, um, you're going to have to go follow Air Force One today. Yeah. You know. I'd be, so, I'd be like, fuck yeah. Um, George Bush came here um, years ago. I forgot why. But I was at the airport when Air Force One came in. Oh, no shit. Dude, that thing is huge. Yeah, well, just, there were 747s. They're big fucking big. planes. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so he was... I forgot what he was here for, but I was like, I'm going to the airport to see this. Right. Get hell some yeah. and, um Super cool. Hell yeah, that thing was just crazy. That's cool. All right, November 25th, 1789, at the end of the Revolutionary War, the last British troops left New York City. Oh, damn. And you want to know why they left? <laughs> because we won! <laughs> <laughs> I Get out of my country! <laughs> I was like, Fucking I can't bums. say it. I was like, he's got to say it. <laughs> Fucking bums. Oh, that's great. What about here? Take your red coats. I love when that shit happens, too. It's so great. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> All right, so this is the one that kind of, like, threw me for a loop. Um, November 25th, 1834. Delmonico's. Right? We have one here in Henrietta. One of, the, one of New York's finest restaurants provides a meal of soup, steak, coffee, and a half a pie for 12 cents. For twelve cents. Twelve cents in eighteen thirty-four. So, so you could get what did it say? Um, uh, provides soup? a meal of soup, steak, steak coffee, coffee, half a pie. A half a pie. Yeah. For twelve cents. Twelve cents. Bro, do you know how much money I'd have? How rich I'd be if I took my current bank account and went back to eighteen thirty-four? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Bro, I could buy steaks and soup for everybody. So, this is the thing. And I'm broke. Yeah, right. Same here. <laughs> In today's money, <laughs> I'm broke. Yeah. You know, you always love those comparisons. <laughs> I'm broke. That's what it compares And then to. there, I'm rich. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the Demo- I didn't know Delmonico's was, have been around for that long. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's the same Delmonico. No? Probably not. That's what I was thinking. But it might, I mean, you never know. It's kind of a popular... Is it a chain now? It's, or, a, well, it's a pretty popular oh, Italian okay. name. So. Yeah, that's true, too. Yeah. I guess I didn't think of yeah. it. But I, I was thinking... It I would be like, cool if it was the same one, though. I was thinking... Um, I'm like, dude, is this Delmonico's, like, the same spinoff of the original in 1834? Yeah. yeah. But... Um, either way, 12 cents for... Uh, say, I haven't... 18... What did you say? 1834? Yeah. I only know what 12 cents would be worth today. So I went, I haven't been to a steak restaurant in a long ass time. So I don't even know how, how much is like a steak dinner now. A nice steak? Yeah. You're paying at least 30 bucks. 30 bucks. At least. Right. I mean, I had a, um, I had a ribeye, um, at Oxen Stone, mm-hmm. um, on the Alexander oh, yeah. there. Yeah. Pretty cool. Play. 60 bucks. 60? 6 D. 6 0. Damn. Yeah. Was it good? Didn't it? Not, not $60 <laughs> good. I was going to say. It was like 35 <laughs> maybe $40 good. And that wasn't, it was, I mean, it was really good. It wasn't no $60 yeah, good, though. Yeah, Because yeah. I've had a $60 steak. Well, I've had a $90 steak. Oh, my God. Um, Did that thing just... It was like... $90 good, though. Oh. Like, it was, it was $90 good. I also had a $120 beef wellington at Gordon Ramsay's restaurant. Slamming. Delicious, right? Yeah. We got all fucking drunk as fuck, though, and I ended up giving the leftovers to a homeless guy in New York City. He was, asleep. he was asleep. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I gave him like 80 bucks worth of steak. 
<laughs> I really gave it to him though. Well, one, I gave it to him because I thought that it would be nice. And right. He was actually asleep. Mm -hmm. And he was just on the street, just asleep right. on the sidewalk. So you're just like. And yeah, Jack and I just walked past and we just kind of put it like right yeah. next to him. I thought it'd be pretty cool to wake up to a fucking Beef Wellington uh, from fucking Gordon Ramsay's restaurant. Made, I hope he knew what it was. You made that dude. But, um, um, I also didn't want to carry it. <laughs> I didn't want to carry the box, yeah, because <laughs> it was heavy. Where are we going to next? <clears throat> so what are we doing here? I, I want to see how much 12 cents is worth today. Oh. From 1834. Whew. Gotta be pretty good. The hike up. Huh. Three dollars and forty-three cents. That's it. This ain't right. <laughs> this ain't right. Well, because we're used to doing like billions and trillions. Yeah. And <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> Fuck this inflation calculator. <laughs> oh man. So yeah. Well, all right. Here we go. By comparison. $100 in 1834 mm -hmm. is the equivalent to $3,200 today. Okay. So. I can see that. You know. I don't know if I'd ever. numbers I thought it was going to be. I don't know if I'd ever eat a $100 steak. <laughs> right. Right. Even if I was rich as fuck, I just, I'd just be like, God damn, I don't know if I could do this. I know, right? <laughs> Okay, 1834. Uh, Here we go. I'm going to get it again. i got to get this number right because I really want to know what it is. This is the inflation calculator I usually use. 1834. I don't know if you could do, like, change, though. <clears throat> and, come on. 12 cents? Give me my number. Oh, okay, so $1 in 1834 is worth $32 oh, today. Oh, damn. So. Not much, so for but. for 12 cents today, I mean, it's, it's like 16 bucks yeah. today. That's. So 12, Whatever. That's 12. not nearly as cool as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Edit! Edit this out! He won't, though. Cut. He won't. Cut. He won't cut it. We don't cut shit around here. <clears throat> we just do stupid shit. Okay. Let's All right. So. Do something that means something, not this stupid inflation calculator. Medal of Honor stories. They're always great. Yep. And we are going to kick it off here. World War II U.S. Army Lieutenant Thomas W. Wiggle. I, my favorite last name so far. Wiggle? Yeah. I mean... Wiggle, dude. And, and there's only one. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm in the W's, obviously. Right. There's only and one there's Wiggle. There's only one Wiggle. There's only one Wiggle. You, won't you can't see. get another Wiggle. <laughs> so Thomas W. Wiggle is the one and only for a Medal of Honor. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of... <clears throat> Life above and beyond the call of duty in the vicinity of Monto Fresen Fres no mm -hmm. God, Fresno, Italy. Just go with it. Yeah. Yep. The third platoon in ascending <laughs> sees a strong yeah. fortified health position. So again, remember a couple of weeks ago we're talking about all the wars around hills. Mm -hmm. We were always at the bottom working, you know. Crazy shit. Uh, fortified hill position protected by three parallel high terrace stone walls was twice thrown back by the withering crossfire. Uh, Lieutenant Wiggle, acting company executive, observing um, the pl platoon was without an officer, volunteered to command it on the next attack, leading his men up the bare rocky slopes through uh, intense and concentrated fire. He succeeded in reaching the first of the stone walls, having himself boosted on top, perching, um, perched on top for a full view of the enemy. He drew and returned um, their fire while his men helped each other up and over. So they're climbing these big ass walls. And there's three of them. <laughs> uh, following the same method, he successfully negotiated the second. Upon reaching the top of the third wall, he faced three houses, uh, which were a key point of the enemy defense. Ordering his men to cover him, he made a dash through the hail of machine gun, uh, machine pistol fire to reach to the nearest house, firing his carbon, his carbon at... What's carbine. The, carbine. What's that? That's the gun? It's a rifle, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, he entered. He drove the enemy before him out of the back door into the second house. Following closely on his heels of the foe, he drove them from this house to the third where they took refuge in a cellar. Um, when his men rejoined him, they found him mortally wounded on the cellar stairs, which he had started to descend 
to force the surrender of his enemy. His heroic action resulted in the capture of 36 German soldiers and the seizure of the strong point. 36? 36. So he went into three houses chasing these dudes. Yep. Dolo. Mm-hmm. By himself. Yep. And then finally, and climbing these big walls. Right. Ducking through fire. He's chasing and, 36 and, people. 36, and then, you know, uh, but his finally men got finally yeah. caught up. But, damn. I know. That's crazy. A one-man show. Literally. By himself. Whew. By himself. Again, on hills. Yeah. Stupid. That's crazy. All right. I'm going to take us to Stanley R. Christensen, uh, Korea. Okay. All right. So, manning one of several listening posts uh, covering approaches to the platoon area when the enemy commenced the attack, uh, Private First Class Christensen uh, quickly sent another Marine to alert the rest of the platoon. Mm. So, he's he's obs- observing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so he sends a dude out. You see, without orders, he remained in his position and, with full knowledge uh, that he would have a slight chance of escape, fired relentlessly at oncoming hostile troops attacking furiously with rifles, automatic weapons, and incendiary grenades. Damn. So he sent his other buddy off to go tell everybody else that they were coming Mm -hmm. this way. And then he stayed and started fighting them off solo. By himself. Um, accounting for seven enemy dead in the immediate vicinity before his position was overrun and he himself fatally struck down, Private First Class Christensen, uh, by his superb courage, valiant fighting spirit, and devotion to duty, was responsible for allowing the rest of the platoon time uh, to man positions, build up a stronger defense on the on that flank, and repel the attack of 41 of the enemy, um, with 41 of the enemy destroyed. Um, many more wounded and three taken prisoner. His self-sacrificing actions in the face of overwhelming odds uh, sustain and enhance the finest traditions of the U.S. Naval Service. Uh, Private First Class Christensen gallantly gave his life for his country. So, Damn. he stayed, got seven of them yeah, yeah. before they got him, yeah. and allowed his platoon to get ready and, because yeah. they came on the flank. Yep. So, it was like, you know, it was a weak side. And, you know, the other guy got back, said, hey, they're coming this way. Watch. All right, everybody get set. Go, 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 go. You know, yeah. imagine if, you know. And he's like. And who knows? It didn't say it was night or anything like that. So, like, it could have been dark. There could have been people sleeping. Yeah. You know what I mean? It I could mean, have been a bloodbath. That's why these guys are just heroes. Mm-hmm. Because he, I mean, he had to have known, you know. Yeah. And he wasn't even supposed to stay. Right. He's supposed well, to just. voluntary, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, it was without orders that he stayed. Yeah. So he should have just gone back. He that was his have. job, was just to go back. Yeah. yeah. But he was like, no, I'm going to slow these dudes down. Yeah. And so, he did, and he changed the course of that the whole, whole battle. The whole, there's... That's the one thing I... dozens and dozens of people that are alive that yeah. have kids and grandkids now because he just decided to stay. Yeah. Like, like families mm-hmm. are, still, are still in existence. Yeah. Because of that guy. And it... Because all these guys. Yeah. And... It, I know I say it every week, but it's like uh, these men's actions, mm-hmm. you know, change the course of everything. You know, yeah. like it's for sure. Like when you sometimes I can just think deep, you know, we're going deep, deep, right. deep. And it's like if he didn't do that, like what if he went back? Oh, dude, there then, would be, you know, like, like if all these guys and, you know, and and these are just the Medal of Honor stories. Just Medal of Honor. Shit like this. Happens all oh, the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and may not get the recognition for it or might get the silver star instead of the Medal right. of Honor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, even just with these 3,200 some odd uh-huh. people, I mean, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of future lives were saved. Yeah. Or were, you know, they were able to, the, that guy went home, had a kid. Right, 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 right. That guy's kid had kids. Yep. That guy's kids had kids. You know right. what I mean? Oh, that are alive. Because of this guy's today. actions. Because of this guy. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. like when I think deep like that, right. I'm like, Man. And, you know, you multiply that by 3,200. <laughs> yeah. You're talking about, like, you know, tens of thousands of people yeah. exist <clears throat> today mm. because that guy stayed yep. and because that guy yep. chased, 30 chased 36 people. <laughs> 
through three houses and over walls and shit. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 crazy. It's when you really go deep with it, or you really like open, you know, your thought to, oh, yeah. to what it really means or what they really did. And it's I mean, it's incredible. Like you said, these are just Medal of Honor stories, right? I bet we could read, you know, uh, stories of like the Afghan War, you know. Oh, and yeah. like just regular soldiers do this right. as well. It's yep. not just you know, even um, just like you know, one soldier just going like that, right? And pushing get out you the way, just or... enough out of the way. Yeah, like you know what I mean. Like you're not going to get the Medal of Honor for that, but. It's, you just save this guy, and then maybe he'll go home and have a kid. Right. And then his kid will have a kid, and then that kid will cure cancer. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> to think of It's a little too much <laughs> for my brain. You know what I mean? Like, I can say it and recognize it, but, like, to to really just, yeah. like, fully get it, it's it's crazy. Yep. So. But that's why all these stories, they just, yeah, they're amazing. Yep. Yeah, and that's why, you know... We're, we try to give as much as much to credit to these people, Hell yeah. you know, read their stories and let, you know, let <clears throat> people know what these people did. And everyone in the military now. Yes, we absolutely. Thank you yeah. a lot. Yeah, we stress that almost every week that it's not, you know, yeah. we're not doing this just because they're cool stories. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's, you know, we Yeah, we just were like... We uh, appreciate the military personnel. Yeah. Past, present, and future. Yeah. You know, beyond words, so... But, yeah, I mean... You don't hear about the Medal of Honor, like. Right. I don't even know why the hell we started. I think we did a show on it. I think we did a show on it, and then we were like, "Wow, these are amazing. (laughs) Let's do these all the time." (laughs) Right. And here we are. Right, and here we are on the C's and the W's. Right. Well, I skipped a lot of A's though, because there's about Anderson. there was about a hundred Andersons, so I had to skip some of the Andersons. Mister. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go back to him though. (laughs) Well, then one week I forgot where I was before I started making a list of the ones that I'd already read. Or we, yeah. We, so like I just I was like nervous and I was like, well, I'll just go to the bees because I you know I know I haven't done a bee yet. Right, right, right. And then I was into the bees and I lost track and I was like, well, I'll just go to the C's because I know I haven't done any C's. So, but I have a list now uh, of all the ones. So I'm gonna start backtracking next week. That's funny. Or we could just say their names and completing the list. You know. Well, the ones with the stories. I want oh to yeah, yeah. Because I skipped a lot of those too. Because like I said, I yeah. I kind of forgot where I was. It's funny. Yeah. There's a lot of them. Yeah. But anyways, guys, don't forget uh, to hit that sub button, click on the bell notification to be the first ones notified when our new episodes hit. And also, mm-hmm. we ask you to please share it with one friend. That's it. Yeah. One, one friend. Share. One share. And, you know, if you happen to see somebody that's in the military, you know somebody that's yes. in the military, especially if they're deployed, and shoot them a quick message and just say, hey, thank you. We love you. We miss you. Thank you. Yep, everyone in the military. Tell them one drink loves them. That we do. Folk show. That we do. Folk show. All right, y'all, until next time. See ya. Cheers. Cheers.